welcome guys to the finale of this career mode it's 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 been a long it's been a long long career mode i started this roundabout in march and uh, it's now october so we've more or less done an entire formula one season in terms of how long it's taken us but we're finally here uh, ready to send off the 2017 season one in hopefully good fashion um the run up to this race has been phenomenal. The races have just been absolutely insane in terms of everything that's gone on uh, for the championship between Sebastian Vettel and Lewis Hamilton. It's gonna it's gonna be an inter interesting one, and uh, I'm I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to see what happens. We've got a few battles in between the teams as well between Williams, Haas, and Force India. They're all fighting. They're all within like five points for each other. So this is a really important race for them three teams. Um, in terms of the constructors, the constructors are still available. There's only like a 12 point gap, I think, between Mercedes and Ferrari. So that could change today, uh, depending on how well Ferrari do. Obviously, they're a bit on the back foot, but um, in terms of the drivers, Sebastian Vettel has a tiny gap to Lewis Hamilton, small enough that if Hamilton comes first and Vettel comes second, Hamilton will take the championship. So it's all relatively close. Well, I'll, I'll, the standings will be up on the screen in a, in a minute um, while we go through some of the formation lap. But it's it's just been a great run up to the end of the season, and it's it's one of those things that it happens not very often. Usually, seasons are won very easily, but the drivers is very close in terms of who can win it. It's between two drivers. The other, uh, Bottas and Raikkonen are not far off, but they're not close enough to actually win um, the drivers' uh, championship. But we'll find out who will win that. And obviously, same with constructors. Not much of a gap there either, compared to everyone else. But it's almost time for lights out. Um, it's going to be an interesting start. Obviously, Bottas might block Vettel um, to try and help him get away. But Vettel on. On the on this um, formation lap, actually making quite a gap to the Mercedes, so he's going to leave them on the grid a little bit longer than probably necessary because there's quite a quite a very short train in terms of how many cars are behind Vettel, so they'll get to the grid relatively quickly, um, and Vettel will have a lot less waiting time compared to the two Mercedes. But I mean, it's gonna it's gonna be an interesting race for sure. Abu Dhabi usually always throws up a good race. It's not very known for reliability issues. So we could see the entire grid finish the race. That would be pretty awesome. Um, I think that would be one of the only races so far this season for that to happen. I think it happened in China, but I'm not 100% sure. But we are almost ready for the lights to go out here in Abu Dhabi. We're ready to find out who will be the drivers and the constructors world champions. We'll find out in 14 laps time. The lights have gone out and we are underway. Bottas gets off to a fantastic start. He could challenge uh, Hamilton into Turn 1 and he will. We've got a Red Bull also challenging Kimi Raikkonen. But Bottas has made it past Lewis Hamilton into Turn 1. And he's actually going to take the lead of the Grand Prix coming out of the first sector. Now Vettel is going to have to pounce on Hamilton if he wants if he wants to maximise his opportunity here. But a little bit further back we've got Pierre Gasly and Nico Hulkenberg actually going side by side through this section at this point in time, it, these two teams aren't really fighting. Renault aren't really anywhere in terms of the dri uh, Constructors' Championship. But Pierre Gasly obviously wants to make sure he gets the drive for next season. No DRS as we are only on lap one. And Vettel has got past Lewis Hamilton um, on down the back straight. So Hamilton down to third now as we was watching this battle um, towards the back. I'm assuming it's going to be back of the points if anything else. But there's more drama for Toro Rosso because he's going to bang wheels with Fernando Alonso, the Kiwi um, Brendan Hartley getting his elbows out, going past the double world champion Fernando Alonso, that was Brendan Hartley up another position from the start, so fair play to him but Vettel not doing too bad a job, you can see he's still ahead of Hamilton and Bottas is stretching his legs ever so slightly, he's got a little bit of a gap to Sebastian Vettel although Sebastian will probably close that down in a little bit, but Hamilton's got a contest with Raikkonen who Judging from practice, they had pretty good race pace, so it's going to be interesting to see if Hamilton can hold off Raikkonen and actually catch back up to Sebastian Vettel. We'll have to see how that pans out as we see a familiar sight of Fernando Alonso being passed in a straight line by another car in general. It's not just it's a Mercedes engine, but Esteban Ocon getting past that McLaren. Now, here we go. We were talking about this a second ago. Kimi Raikkonen 
being very late on the breaks down into the chicane on Hamilton. They're going to go side by side through this. Now, Kimi, I'm assuming, is going to have DRS, which he does by the looks of it. Yep, Kimi's got DRS. He's going to go side by side. So he's going to cruise past Hamilton. You would think so, at least. But they're still going to go side by side. And sparks flying everywhere. It's going to be into the other chicane. And Kimi looks like he's going to have the job done. And he does. These two are going side by side for every single corner of this track. This is amazing to watch. The fact that Kimi is still fighting Hamilton. And Hamilton is fighting for his championship hopes. This kind of does really depend if Hamilton is going to win the championship. Kimi Raikkonen is on the inside line for this right hand. It looks like he's got the job done here. So Hamilton down to fourth place from first on the grid. Hamilton has dropped three places in almost three laps. That is really not good for his championship hopes. While that was happening, we had another scrap a little bit further back. That's Sergio Perez going down the outside of Lance Stroll and getting that move done pretty swiftly to say the least. So fair play to Sergio Perez, obviously in that battle against Williams that could prove very important. Carlos Sainz battling his fellow Spanish compatriot once again. So Carlos Sainz is making moves in that Renault. Fernando Alonso not having the greatest race so far. He's been passed twice into that chicane now. He's going to have to get his elbows out a little bit. But coming on to lap 5, we are Vettel is right up the back of Valtteri Bottas. Vettel's going to have DRS. And the sun is starting to set, as you can see, we've got a bit of gloom in the top of the sky. DRS wide open now for Sebastian Vettel along the back straight. He's going to cruise up to the back. He's going to go to the left-hand side to defend his Bottas, but Vettel will go all the way around the outside with the aid of DRS. Vettel will give Bottas a little bit of space. Uh, they're going to go side by side, but ultimately Vettel's going to have the better traction. Although uh, Bottas might have DRS coming into this section, but fair play to Sebastian Vettel. He is hungry for this championship. He wants this championship more than anything to claim his fifth world championship. It's been a few years. It's It's been a few years since his last world championship, so I can understand him wanting none. There is a Haas radically coming out of the back of the slipstream of the McLaren, and that is Kevin Magnussen, who passes Alonso uh, before the chicane where he's had terrible luck so far. So it's all going all over the place. But lap six, you've got Sebastian Vettel, who's not gained anything on Bottas. In fact, it looks like Vettel was slowing more or less intentionally to kind of back him up into Kimi before uh, Vettel goes into the pit. So that could prove that Kimi maybe has a chance on Bottas. It looked like Vettel almost hit the wall there on the entrance to the pit lane. That would have ended his race and that would have been absolutely awful for the German driver. Hamilton comes into pit two and we've got Ricardo coming through as well. So Hamilton could be held. Hamilton is held. So Hamilton's lost even more time in the pit stop thanks to Daniel Ricardo coming in. Although it does look like Ricardo might be held a little bit more than Hamilton with that train of cars coming through. But Vettel is on his way out. There's a train of cars coming out. Can Vettel get ahead of the train of cars that are exiting by the pit lane? And it looks like he's cleared them just about. Uh, not too much untoward. And Hamilton, I think he's lucky enough just to have missed that train. I reckon if he didn't get held, he might have been in the middle of that. So he might gain back his time compared to what he had before. But the following lap... Bottas and Raikkonen do make their pit stops. I can't see any of these two being held as the second wave of pit stops usually means that the front runners don't really get held. And of course, they go straight back out. Verstappen in the background had a very quiet race so far has Max Verstappen just behind his teammate. Uh, we might see them battling considering Ricardo got held. Uh, Verstappen might find himself in a slightly interesting position to say the least. But Bottas... We join in what I'd assume P2, yeah, Vettel's already gone through, then Raikkonen and followed by Lewis Hamilton. So Vettel at this point in time doing is still doing a solid job, managed to maintain the gap to Valtteri Bottas. So Vettel obviously out in the lead in front, except he drifts extremely wide at the hairpin and Bottas is going to go straight through. Uh, Ra uh, Raikkonen doesn't quite get there, but Vettel is definitely going to have to make some ground. He won't have DRS. So he's going to have to try and get past the good old-fashioned way down the back straight. He's going to go to the left-hand side of Bottas. Sort of slightly different to how it worked out last time. They're going to go so deep into the corner. But Vettel's going to get it done before the exit of the chicane. Now, that was a weird, weird incident with um, Sebastian and Vettel. I'm not actually sure what happened. But Kimi Raikkonen is thinking of shaping a move on Bottas immediately. Raikkonen's going to go to the right-hand side. And he's going to go all the way around the outside of Bottas and potentially getting the move done what he did to Hamilton. That would be a fantastic job from Kimi and definitely clinch the constructors. Uh, the bollards on the floor, but Bottas does hold off Raikkonen before he can actually you know, get past him and actually get any of that done. So we're going to have to see what happens here. So Vettel is going to go th through here and the car just 
it just loses traction altogether on the braking and it just drifts wide like it goes sideways which is very very peculiar to say the least but um and Kevin Magnussen going back past Fernando Alonso again so Magnussen obviously lost a bit of time during the pit stop phase Alonso gaining some time and having to see the back of that house once again probably isn't exactly what he wants to see but again we saw these two fighting earlier Pierre Gasly and Nico Hulkenberg they're still going at it side by side all the way through this section of the circuit and Pierre Gasly's done a solid drive so far this season um, apart from when he had that mass massive crash in Canada which ruled him out for a few races but Hulkenberg making use of that works Renault car and he's going to go side by side with Pazzi this is an amazing shot of the cars coming through this chicane uh, Gasly looks like he might have to yield but in fact it's Hulkenberg that yields in the end so fair play to Pierre who's actually getting past Hulkenberg and doing an absolutely stellar job we got Esteban Ocon challenging Lance Stroll here and going through this chicane there's a lot of movement going on through the chicane at this point oh Ocon bounces over the curb straight into Stroll that is not good whatsoever there was a little bit of contact I think his rear wheel actually ended up hitting the side pod of Lance Stroll from what I could see at least anyway but we're going to come in to the next chicane Ocon goes really slowly and Stroll's locked up Ocon's going to go through they make more contact and it looks like Ocon must have a puncture to be going that slowly we're going to have to look on the replay it was that left wheel that hit Stroll and sure enough it is a puncture so that is a puncture for Ocon he's going to have to pit which has ruined his race considering he pit not too long ago but while that was happening, we had Fernando Alonso and Carlos Sainz going at it uh, once again. So Alonso made up a lot of time in the pit stop phase to be able to get past Sainz and Magnussen again. But it's, 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 in all honesty, it makes no difference because Alonso is going to get past. But coming on a little bit later into the race, we've got the two Red Bulls. I said Verstappen had a quiet race. He's trying to prove me wrong and make me look like an idiot. So Verstappen's going to try and go through on his teammate. Who's going to emerge over the hill first? It is going to be Verstappen. Ricardo will have another bite of DRS uh, behind Verstappen. So this could get very racy indeed. Ricardo in the slipstream of Verstappen. He's going to pull to the right-hand side of Verstappen. He's going to try and go the long way around. Whether Ricardo can make that on his teammate will be very impressive considering how good these both of these drivers are. But Max shuts the door and Ricardo stays exactly where he is. So fair play. we got... On the penultimate lap, guys, we're this close to the championship ending. As it stands, Hamilton, all oh, Vettel's gone extremely wide there. He touches Bottas a little bit, which could compromise him just a smidge. But um, as it stands, Hamilton will lose the championship to Vettel, and Ferrari will clinch the constructors um, as it stands um, in this order. So right, Vettel, Bottas, Raikkonen, and Hamilton. So it's not... It's... It's pretty sewn up by Ferrari at this point in time. We are now on the final lap. Vettel coming into the last sector of the track. And Bottas, I, don't, I can't see him getting anywhere. He had the back straight. Couldn't make that work. Both DRS zones couldn't get that to work. Same with Hamilton. Hamilton couldn't get anywhere near Sebastian Vettel. So Sebastian Vettel does look like he's going to clinch his fifth world championship. And Ferrari are going to get that elusive constructors championship they've been looking for so long. Sebastian Vettel comes round the penultimate corner, round to the final corner. He's going to clinch his fifth world championship. In fact, he's actually got extremely wide. He's going to lose. He's lost the position to Bottas. So Bottas wins and Vettel comes in second place. Yeah, just to confirm, Vettel is in second place. Oh my lord, that has just blown the Constructors' Championship for Ferrari. Let's have a look. He gets on the curb and he just loses the back end. And Bottas just goes straight through. Oh, that's, that is awful for Ferrari. But nonetheless, Sebastian Vettel is now a five-time Formula 1 World Champion. And he's going to celebrate in some style of donuts. What else can you do when you celebrate a World Championship? But Sebastian Vettel is a five-time Drivers World Champion in Formula 1, 4 with Red Bull, 1 for Ferrari and potentially many more with the Scuderia Ferrari team. But that was just crazy. The final corner and Vettel bottles it and just loses the rear end and Bottas just goes straight through. So that means that Mercedes do still get to have the Constructors' Championship. That is just... Sergio Marchione will not be a happy buddy as um, Vettel just completely knocks over the bollard with his front wing. But... That was an absolute. That was just an absolutely crazy race. I can't believe that that happened right right there and then. Um, fair play to Bottas being close enough to do it, but I think Vettel he's gonna be a bit annoyed. But I don't know. I think like the thing is as well is obviously Vettel came in for a pit stop, 
after to get the releases that tires just so I can do donuts. Because obviously this fifth world championship means a lot to Vettel. Hence why he's got ultra softs on because he came in for he came in, changed tires, went back out and did some donuts while the track's empty. But um you know, fair play to Sebastian Vettel. He's he deserves it. He he, he bought it back from a deficit and he has just absolutely smashed it. And he obviously he's gonna celebrate in style. Um he deserves to it's been a good season for Sebastian, to say the least. I mean, it's not that often that you get a car that's as competitive as this Ferrari, but um, he's just going to enjoy his time and enjoy everything that will come with that fifth world championship. There we go. Double confirmation of Mercedes winning the Constructors' Championship. It's so gutting for Ferrari, um, but nonetheless, Sebastian Vettel and Kimi Raikkonen do manage to get onto the podium. So fair play to them. They will manage to add another podium to their collection, another trophy. Not a winner's trophy, unfortunately, for them boys. But nonetheless, it was a fantastic race. Uh, Kimi doing a solid job to get past Hamilton, which um, obviously, if that hadn't happened, then the Constructors probably would have looked a little bit more different without the final corner incident. But fair play to Valtteri Bottas. He's come alive in the second half of the season, um, to be quite frank, and Hamilton's kind of fallen off. He had a he had a good charge in Brazil where he absolutely dominated, but apart from that, he was just nowhere in terms of everything else. We're gonna look a bit more at the drivers and constructor standards just to finalise everything. And here we are. So we're looking at the final end of season standings. You can see all of the drivers, all the way from Vettel in first to Marcus Ericsson in twenty fourth. The only driver who took part who did not score any points, which was pretty. Uh, Pretty surprising to be honest with you. I mean, I didn't really expect that in all honesty. And obviously, got the constructors, Mercedes just pipping Ferrari by about eight points. Um, that's not correct, is it? That's 12 points. Sorry, my maths is not with it. <laughs> and then all the race winners from round one all the way to round 20. Um, Hamon actually getting the most, which I think it's interesting compared to everyone else. Hamon's got five, Bottas with four, Sebastian Vettel with three, Pierre Gasly with three, uh, Ricardo with two, Verstappen with two, and Raikkonen with one. So, I mean, it's a bit of a weird season, but that's been it for season one, guys. Um, season two, obviously, is going to be a modded season, um, very similar to how the first five races started. So, it's 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 going to be like that, and um, it's going to be consistent as with everything else that will be going on the channel. Um, obviously, daily uploads... We are so close to 1k, it's actually amazing. Like, I can't I can't begin to explain how excited I'm going to be for that. But that's been it for this video, guys. It's been a really long one. It's probably the longest career mode video I've done. If any of you guys are still here, then I honestly appreciate you guys so much for sticking all out to the end of this video. Anyway, that's been it for me. Until next time, guys, I'll see you then. Bye-bye.